Look at that smile. I'm a happy guy today, buddy. Every time you, you look, you look happy. You look very happy. Just I waiting. tell you what, one of the one of the best things about my day is when I when I see me conversations with you. Welcome to Covers is Puck Props with 14 year NHL vet Carlo Koliakovo. Today the season winding down. Why uh, don't want to don't want to don't want to put a lot of units on these games coming down to the wire, but there's three games today. Uh, looking at some offense for the Islanders in a good matchup, and then a stack in Dallas versus St. Louis. Let's start off Montreal Islanders, Kyle Paul Mary over two and a half shots. That's at even money, widely available. I, I wouldn't bet on the Islanders in the spot, as we as we know, just because a team needs to play for more doesn't mean they're gonna win. Just ask the the Pittsburgh Penguins. What what's Perfect. your takeaway from that? Five two loss to Chicago. Ooh, how do you do that? You get a layup the other night with the Islanders losing. You get the to control your own destiny with two layup matchups. They play they played Chicago yesterday, and who's the team that they're playing tomorrow? It's pro- oh, Columbus. Another easy one. Yeah, they yeah. And they lose to Chicago. What? The two worst teams in all of hockey. Well done. Jeez. So the Islanders have life here. They need one point to solidify a playoff spot as they own the tiebreaker. Uh, I think the offense gets a, a great matchup here tonight versus Montreal, who we saw give up, what, four power play goals to the Leafs, 65% PK over the last 30 days. Palmieri, he's playing with Nelson on the second line, PP1, so want to get a taste of this PP1. Leads all healthy forwards and shot attempts per 60, and we could see maybe some more minutes as they lean on the top two lines in New York. For a team that usually rolls four lines, it uh, could be a little advantageous for some Kyle Palmieri props here. How hard is this spot for the Islanders, though? Like, as a team going into this spot, you got second life. You, you got a chance. I mean, does desperation, I don't know, does desperation being less cute and getting more pucks on the net, does that make more sense? Let's not overthink this, guys, and let's just kind of stick to basics. Well, there has to be a mentality, like – you know that you got to win a hockey game. You can't just show up and think you're going to win, or you're going to be presenting the same scenario that the Pittsburgh Penguins walked into yesterday. Where, you know, again, I don't know what Chicago's doing, even winning that game because now they jump frog or they leapfrogged uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets for the last spot um, for the lottery. But look, the Islanders have been a really good home team all season. They're 24, 13, and three at home. They got one of the best young goaltenders in the league. There's no excuse for the Islanders to lose this game. Montreal's got nothing to play for. Some, and, and I'll be honest with you, sometimes the hardest game to play, hardest games to play in the NHL is when your team that you're playing against a team that's got absolutely nothing to lose. And so with the pressure in the building, the pressure on the team, the second life that they've given, you cannot let this, this opportunity pass by. This has to be a dominant performance by the honors. It has to be led by their best players. And you got to make you, you, you got to give them a reason to quit in the first period. So if I'm the coach, I'm walking in there and saying, guys, let's take it a period of time, shift at a time, but let's make sure after the first period we're coming in with the lead and we've got somewhere between 15 and 20 shots on that. Got me fired up with that that speech there, coach. You got, <laughs> you got me fired up there. Right. But, that- like, Montreal doesn't even have the talent. Like, they're so yeah. depleted. Like, there's a difference between – having a full roster and nothing to play for, and then having an AHL roster and nothing to play right. for. Agreed. Then the next game here, Dallas at St. Louis. Jason Robertson has a point total of 0.5, which doesn't make it. Yeah, so you got to take advantage of that. So we're going to put Robertson and Pavalski together. We can do this at 365. That's where I'm getting this number. Minus 105 for the two line mates and PP1 guys just to get a point. Dallas still looking for that top spot in the division, so a full effort. Uh, is likely coming today, which is important as we see down the stretch here. No team, I don't think, in hockey is more reliant than than Dallas on their top line. And then to, regardless of matchups, they've been excelling. Robertson, Pavalski have combined for 30 total points over the last 10 games. Face the St. Louis team, bottom 10 and expected goals against, five on five since the deadline, 3.73 goals against. Could be Hofer tonight. He got called up, so we don't even know. It's a stack with Robertson at 0.5 points and taking his center, Pavalski, for a point two Points together in eight of the last 10 games and contributing on the same goal 10 times over the last 10 games. So this could be a one-and-done goal situation. Nothing too complicated from this handicap here, Carlo. St. Louis is playing decent. 
they're playing over 500 hockey. Speaking of playing nothing, nothing to play for, but because of that, they're played in some high scoring games, 7.63 total goals per game since, uh, oh, sorry, over the last 30 days. What does a bench look like in a game like this for Dallas, who is already heavily influenced by that top line? What happens on the bench? What do coaches say in games like these when it could be every other shift? Yeah, well, the only thing that you're trying to do is, is you're trying to get everybody to buy into feeding off of what the top line's bringing, right? Um, just looking at Dallas's schedule right now, they've really feasted on uh, weaker teams in, in this last month. You know, they've had a uh, tough time scoring against the, the, the you know, the, the tougher teams like Colorado and Vegas. But other than that, five against Nashville, four against uh, Philly, six against Detroit the other night. And they finished the season on a back-to-back against St. Louis. It's going to be St. Louis's final home game tonight. So they'll probably want to leave a lasting impression with their home fans. But ultimately, if this team gets led by their top players, you know, Ben Sagan, Robertson, Pavelski, uh, Rupe Hintz. Rupe. You know, like, I don't think there's anything that can stop them right now, especially when they've got a lot to play for, right? Um, you know, the division is still in reach, and I think that's a very, very important spot that any team that has a chance to, to accomplish wants to win it because you're giving yourself a, a, a potential easier matchup, right? I mean – the, t- the team that wins this division is probably going to, you know, earn Seattle in the first round of the playoffs versus either playing Minnesota or Colorado. So there's going to be a-, a stronger emphasis to get a better result. And u- ultimately, if you look at what's led the way for the Dallas Stars lately, it's been the Pavelski's, the Robertson. I mean, Robertson eclipsed 100 points the other night because, you know, this team is scoring a lot of goals and he's a big reason why they're doing it. Yeah, they're just stacking and- and Pavelski got his 1,000 point the other night, too. So something has to be celebrated there. I mean, aside from Pittsburgh, that was an anomaly yesterday, I think. I mean, how, how the hell they lost Chicago. These are the games you want to focus on, too. Teams that have something to play for and focusing on their best players to do it. Yeah, so let's stack those two together for minus 105 for a point each. Three games slight, lots of landmines here. So let's avoid some stuff, stick to some things that mean something to some teams. And Kyle Powell, Mary, over two and a half shots, even money. And then the stack in Dallas with uh, Robertson and Pawalski for a point at minus 105. That will do it for us today. Today is Wednesday, Friday. Do we have games Friday? One? Yeah, yeah there's, there's two a, games. A couple games Friday. All right. All right. Let's hit up. We'll see you back here Friday for a play. And then it's playoff time, mate. So I'm oh. Josh Ingles. He's Carlo Koliakovo. This is Covers. Do us a favor. Hit the like, subscribe button. Lead us out, bud. Yeah, hit that like and subscribe button. Oh, there you go.